Hi there, this is Doc J. Zimmerman. We are continuing our ongoing series on pregnancy prenatal chiropractic care. We have our volunteer patient laying on the table, uh, Caitlin, who happens to be 19 weeks pregnant or 18 weeks pregnant right 18. now? 18 weeks pregnant. So she's at the beginning of her pregnancy prenatal care. So this is really awesome that she's, she's here early. Um, some of our patients will search out pregnancy care just for the um, health value in the beginning. And then a lot of our pregnancy patients come in because they're actually having a condition that's common to pregnancy. And one of the most common conditions to pregnancy is sciatica. Now sciatica is named after a nerve that runs out of the pelvis and lower back and down the leg. It's called the sciatic nerve. And in Caitlin's case, she came to us with sciatica going down her left leg. Correct, Caitlin? Yep. Yep. So as we talk about with pregnancy, the most important thing is pelvic alignment. The, the pelvis is our primary pelvic alignment is our primary goal in pregnancy prenatal care. We have to keep the pelvis straight and centered because that's um, the exit area for the baby and that just helps with labor and delivery to have the baby have an easy exit. So our goal is centering the pelvis, making it balanced and bringing stability to the joints. Um, the other thing that happens when the pelvis goes out of alignment is it causes a distortion, a stretching of the round ligaments which support the, um, the abdomen and the uterus. So if the pelvic goes out of alignment and it pulls on a round ligament and the round ligament tightens up, that's going to cause constraint. And that constraint narrows the space in the uterus for the baby to move. And the less space the baby has to move, then there's a chance that the baby can end up in the wrong position when it's time to be delivered and or time to be born, excuse me. Um, and that position could be breached, head, head to the side or head upward as opposed to head down. So we center the pelvis, we do soft tissue work on the round ligament. That technique is called Webster's Technique. We're a certified uh, Webster's Technique office here. And that loosens the ligament, which then allows the baby to have more room to move, which increases our odds of the baby being head down and having a, a normal um, head out delivery. So our first step in pregnancy care is we want to figure out which side of the pelvis is the stuck side or the misaligned side. So we'll do different reflex tests. The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and I'm going to check the length of Caitlin's legs. So what we're going to do is we're going to bend the legs up. We're going to look to see for what we have in an apparent short leg. Now some people have an actual short leg. They were either born that way or they had an injury to the leg, say like a fracture, and then the calcium comes in there and it makes one leg grow a little longer. But everybody else has an apparent short leg. And the apparent short leg is because there's a pelvic imbalance when you lay down. So the pelvis that's out of alignment makes the leg look like it's drawing up. And we can see that it's a short leg. So when I'm in this position with Caitlin, she has a right short leg of about a quarter to a half an inch. When I flex her legs up, guess what happens? The leg now increases to the long leg. All right, and it looks to be almost an inch longer. All right, you may be able to see that on the camera. And that happens because this sacroiliac joint is out of alignment here. And it makes that leg do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press on the sacroiliac joint and rock it to try to see the motion. And then we're going to compare it to the other side. And you can see, and I don't know if Caitlin can feel, do you feel how well this one rocks? Mm -hmm. And then we get over here, it's stuck. It doesn't move as well. So I'm going to do a reflex check where I press on that joint, and then we're going to look at the leg, and bam, that just cut her leg length discrepancy down from a, over a half inch to just about a quarter inch. So that's a major issue here. But now Caitlin's getting sciatica down the left leg, so we got to figure out why it's happening on the left leg. So a lot of times the sacrum rotates to the side and that bunches up the piriformis muscle, which is in the butt cheeks here, and then that grabs the sciatic nerve. So I'm going to do a reflex challenge on Caitlin's sacrum, pushing it this way. We're going to look at the legs and see what happens. I'm going to push on the other side and see what happens. And when I do the left side, 
I'm getting a positive. So that's telling me she has a left sacral apex. So that would explain why this nerve bunches up. Now, if she happens to get sciatica on this side too, that can happen because this sacral sacroiliac joint's out of alignment, okay? So she definitely has pelvic instability, which means there's gonna be round ligament tension. So our first goal is to loosen her up a little bit, and this is the best part. We're gonna take a vibrational massager, and we're just gonna increase circulation. We're gonna go over the joint here, and we're gonna get the blood flow. Is that all right, Caitlin? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna loosen that up, and a lot of the prenatal care patients will tell me, please don't stop, I'll pay you to go longer. <laughs> <laughs> But the other thing I forgot to mention, you know, Caitlin's pregnant and you're watching this and guess what? You, you've noticed this and maybe you're asking yourself as you're watching it, she's laying on her belly. How could she lay on her belly when she's uh, pregnant? Well, the reason that she can do that is we have specially equipped tables that raise the pelvic piece up so her abdomen can hang over the edge, making it completely safe and relaxing to lay on her stomach. And that's the case, right? It feels good to lay on your belly? Because one of the things that in pregnancy, the women will come in here and, you know, they've been six, seven, eight months of not being able to lay on their stomach at all. So this feels really good. And so we're just going to switch sides. And just loosen up a little bit. And then we're going to go right over that piriformis muscle, and that can be tender at times because it's just all stretched and imbalanced. And as I said, the sciatic nerve runs right through the middle of that. So when that muscle's tight, it's grabbing on. So that's why we like to loosen it up a little bit. All right, so that's enough. It's not really done as a massage, even though it is a massager. It's just done to increase the circulation, get the blood flowing in there, loosen things up a little bit, makes it easier to adjust. So with pregnancy care, the main difference to then traditional chiropractic care is that there's certain adjustments we cannot do on her because of the pregnant condition. We don't want to put any torque in the spine. We can't put any uh, torque and tension. So the uh, typical side posture, lower back manual adjustment, that's, that's not done, all right? That would be contraindicated. You want to keep the torque out of there because we don't want that abdomen being stretched the wrong way because that could be dangerous. So in chiropractic obstetrics, they've, just, they've come up with techniques to align the pelvis that's completely safe for the mother to be and completely safe for the baby. And this technique is drop pelvis technique. So we're gonna raise this piece up. I'm gonna apply pressure with my hands in the direction I need that sacroiliac joint to move. And as I'm pressing, the table drops like that. So my momentum and force goes through the joint and follows through as the table drops and that realigns the joint. So we're gonna just tighten the tension a little bit. I'm gonna press my arm on the joint here and we're pushing down with that hand. If you notice, I got my right hand on our ischial tuberosity, that's commonly what we call the butt bone, the bone you sit on, because when this joint goes out here, this one drops down, so we're gonna push this way and up. So that's how we level the pelvis. It only takes a couple drops, like that. So now we're gonna work on that sacral rotation. I'm going to lift this piece up. I'm gonna get my arm on the sacrum, and we're gonna push this way. Good. That's great. Now I'm just gonna balance, check the legs, see how we're doing. Man, that looks good. Still got a little bit of an issue right here, but we're gonna just tap this one more time with my hand. And then we're gonna take out our Arthur Stim instrument. Our Arthur Stim is an electronic impulse, low force, highly specific adjusting instrument. It taps the joint and it puts motion in the joint, like that. So we're able to get on the joint and push downward. Now the other good thing about the Arthur Stim instrument is that the repetitive thrusts work on the same impulse frequency as neural impulses. 
So it's actually when I squeeze this trigger, it's tapping her 12 times a second, believe it or not, 12 times in one second, and that mimics the neural impulse of 12 impulses per second. So we're actually stimulating nerve healing and nerve impulse flow just by using this instrument. And when people are in pain, the instrument also stimulates the mechanoreceptors, which are endings of the nerve that have to deal with pain. And it can also cause, it will cause the pain to decrease just by stimulating those mechanoreceptors. We're well, getting a lot of information here that yeah. I tell you in the beginning. Huh? <laughs> so we're going to take a little tension off her upper back, and we're able to do that with traditional manual chiropractic. I'm going to put my hands here. And we're just going to press into her thoracic spine a little bit, like that, and we're going to get some motion in there. Now, in chiropractic, one of the things we do is, whether you have back pain, neck pain, or you don't have any pain at all, we check the entire spine for alignment, because it's all connected like a big rope. So if something's out here, eventually something's out here, and you want to get everything unwind, un, unwound. I was going to say unwinded. You want to get anything unwound so that we can get the body flowing again. And as you're taught in school, you know that the nervous system controls the function of everything in the body. The brain sits up here in the skull, the spinal cord attaches from top to bottom, nerves branch out and control all the organs in the body. So we have impulses that are making uh, Caitlin's heart function, her lungs breathe, her digest her breakfast, and control her immune system. So when we adjust the spine, we're actually taking pressure off the nerves, which is improving function of all our body parts. And as far as pregnancy is concerned, when we adjust her lower back, we're stimulating and improving nerve flow to the reproductive organs, her uterus, which in turn, we're stimulating the nerves that are helping the baby develop. So this is very good for the baby as well. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to, we're going to get Caitlin to flip over and we're going to do some more work on the round ligament. I'm just going to shut the camera off for a second. All right, so here we have Caitlin has flipped over on, on her back, a supine position. So what we're going to do is we're going to palpate for the round ligaments. So we take our finger on our umbilicus, which is your belly button, and then other finger on top of the iliac crest, and we draw two imaginary lines. And where my fingers intersect, that's the point on the round ligament where the tension is the most. So we just put our thumb on the ligament and apply some upward pressure going towards our opposite shoulder. And we do that for about 20, 30 seconds. Now this is preventative prenatal Webster's technique. The baby is not, um, you know, in a breech position. We're just doing this preventatively. Um, to keep the ligament soft and not get hard and start causing constraint. So typically on a Webster's technique, when there's a breech baby, we'd only find, we just work on the one side, the one, the tight, really taut round ligament. But when I'm doing my prenatal care, when there is no issue, especially at this early stage, I work on both ligaments. And then, as I said, if someone had a baby that, someone who came into me at 37 weeks, and their baby was in the breech position, then I would be really concentrating on the other, on the really tight round ligament. So it's real simple, just 20 seconds or so, a little light pressure. And this isn't uncomfortable, right? Mm -mm, it actually feels good. Feels good. A little pressure like this. So then, now, when we have our pelvis, as I said, this is the, if this is the back of the body, and these are your big sacroiliac joints that we were working on where the pelvic goes out of alignment. Now, if, you, if you, we do this, the way Caitlin's laying, the front of the pelvis here, where the pubic bones are, the pelvis is starting to spread open for the baby to come out and have an easy exit. So these pubic bones are, their alignment is critical. They have to be in the right position to make sure that this area is open as wide as it should. And as the pelvis is changing shape, as we're getting more towards the end of the pregnancy, sometimes these things get stuck too, these two pubic bones. So it's important to work on them. So what we do is, again, for, because it's, it's a sensitive area, we use the arthrostim with a nice, soft, um, wide rubber tip on there. 
As I tell um, Caitlin and all my pregnant patients, the worst part about this adjustment is just me finding the area because I have to put my thumb on it and it can be sore. So I find it, that's it, it's done. And then I take the instrument, a couple taps down and that's all it does. And as she's getting more and more through the pregnancy, what typically happens is, and Caitlin will tell us as it's going on, that one side of the pubic bone is going to become more tender than the other because it's starting to raise up higher due to the opposite side of the pelvis. So we just press down it like this, and that's it. Pubic bones are adjusted. So again, as I mentioned, everything's connected and related. So now we're going to go to the top, and we're going to work on our upper cervical area, which is her neck. And Caitlin doesn't mind having traditional chiropractic care on the neck, which means I'm going to use my hands and manually adjust her cervical spine like this. I'm going to turn and just give a little lift with my fingers and we get those upper cervicals to move which clears out all the tension in the upper neck area which helps the messages from the brain and the brain stem flow to the rest of the body. Now if a patient does not like traditional chiropractic care there is ways that we take care of them that is just as effective. Some people just don't like to feel bones move, and that's fine. And some people don't like to hear that noise of bones moving, you know, like when your knuckle pops. So we have ways of adjusting. We take the arthrostim instrument, and we can put an attachment on it, and then we, go, and we adjust the neck like that. We would go on the neck and just do this, and it still moves the bones. If they don't like when I press on their back, then we use the arthrostim on their back. And it's very safe, very effective, very specific, and very gentle. So never think you can't go to the chiropractor because the chiropractor has science and technology and ways to adjust things that they didn't have 50 or 60 years ago. So what we're gonna do now is what I consider the pregnant woman's favorite adjustment. We're gonna sit you up. As the pregnancy progresses, the belly starts to grow. Caitlin's not there yet, but there's going to be a point when her belly is really sticking out there because the baby's larger, and it's going to be pulling on her spine forward, so it gets a lot of tension in here. So what we do is we go in the opposite direction, and we lay Caitlin back on my hand, and I apply a little pressure with my shoulder, and I lean down on her like this, and we get the spine to move a little bit. Now she was a little stuck right in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend forward a little more and I'm gonna come down and apply a little pressure. Relax. There it goes, good one. <laughs> See, that's the one everybody likes. I mean, personally, I'm not pregnant and that's my favorite adjustment. So that was really good. Um, so that's our pregnancy prenatal chiropractic demonstration for today. I appreciate Caitlin volunteering. And we're going to keep doing these um, with all of my pregnant women that come in so that we can spread the word of prenatal chiropractic care so more and more women understand what we're doing and take advantage of it. All right? So we'll, um, we'll see you soon.